Thanks for checking out this no spoiler movie review. Um, this is for Dario Argento's Opera, which is a 1987 film. And I didn't watch it on a streaming service. I actually got it out through Netflix DVD. Yes, if you haven't seen some of my other reviews where I've used DVDs through that service, I'm still doing it. It is well worth it for me because there are a lot of titles that um, you just can't get anywhere. Uh, streaming services, keep in mind, are very, very limited. So things like Netflix um, DVD service are very much worth it if you're looking for older stuff, especially older horror stuff. Uh, I couldn't find opera on any streaming stuff, so this was helpful. Although, to be honest, the, the DVD quality of that um, version of opera was did not look very good, to be honest. It was kind of rough, um, but, you know, whatever. You watch it for the content of the film, not necessarily how that particular version of the film looks. Although, you know, whatever. Uh, okay, so... Uh, so I find it interesting, one of the first things that occurred to me, is this film has a lot to do with um, opera in this instance. It's an operatic version of Macbeth that's going on uh, in the main storyline, and it kind of starts the, with the behind the scenes at the stage as they're doing you know, practices and stuff like that. And it was interesting because I was like, man, this seems a lot like the film Stage Fright, which is another giallo film. Opera is a giallo. Uh, and so I was just like, when did Stage Fright come out? I think it may have been the same year. Checked it up, checked up on it, internetmoviedatabase.com. Yeah, 1987, Opera and Stage Fright. And they, they have a very similar feel because of the setting. Because Stage Fright's done uh, uh, kind of like behind the scenes uh, at a play, and Opera's done behind the scenes at an opera. So it's really, it, I was, thought it was really weird. And then I was like, this is even weirder, though, because the guy who did Stage Fright is Michel Suave, who has worked on film with Dario Argento, who did opera. And so for the fact that they've worked together before, and then they had two mo they each had a movie that came out the same year that were pretty similar, I wonder if they've been had been talking and got like one of them got an idea for from the other one for a film, and they just I don't know. I don't know if it's coincidence or not, but it seems like not coincidence. You know what I'm saying? But the other interesting thing is that Michel Suave has been in some, uh, a bunch of the films as an actor with uh, Argento. He was in, like, Tenebre, um, I think Phenomena, and most most uh, famously his role in Demons as the guy with, like, the, the metallic half mask on. You know, he doesn't have big roles. Oh, and the other thing is I saw an internet movie database that apparently he's uncredited but actually has a role in in opera so just very very weird and interesting to me that, that there's that tie-in i like I, I find those things very interesting um so i really like these types of films and when i say these i'm talking about opera and stage fright again where it is this kind of like behind the scenes of an opera or a stage play or anything like that because it's something that a lot of people are not privy to and to kind of see it depicted whether it's fully faithful to what actually goes on or not it's just interesting to see all the inner workings um well the behind the scenes workings and one of the things that really hits you with the way it's portrayed in this film is that it's so busy and and that's one of the things that becomes like a little distracting in the beginning of the film is like there are two characters talking and there's people just constantly like walking between them and behind them and everyone's just like oh excuse me excuse me excuse me people are all over the place and you're just kind of like, man, this is distracting. But it's kind of genius because that kind of gets the point through of how busy it is, how distracting the environment is behind the scenes of these well-produced, well-put-together plays and operas. So I just thought it was really cool that it kind of like gives you a realistic feel. Um, I did theater in high school, so I kind of have an idea. You know, it's not nearly the same, I'm sure, but kind of. Okay, so... There was a very heavy focus in this film on these ravens, and they kept kept coming back to these ravens, particularly focusing on like the eyes of the ravens, which in general, there, there's a very large focus on eyes, but let me talk about the raven stuff first, first and then I'll go into the eyes a little bit, but um, with the ravens, they focused on them a lot. There are a lot of like tight shots or like close-ups of the faces of the ravens, uh, a lot of, of scenes of the ravens making like squawking noises. And really annoying gets really, really annoying.
thing because they keep coming back to it and when they're doing it it they're doing it for too long in my opinion there's really long drawn out shots the noise of the ravens repeatedly squawking gets extremely annoying extremely fast just seeing them just flying around or walking around or just making noise becomes very tiresome very annoying and it's one of the worst things about this film uh although there are other things i if you can't tell i didn't really dig this film to be honest um this is the first argento that i'm watching that i'm just kind of like i don't i don't think it's a bad film but for me there are a lot of things that really annoyed me about it and I just feel like in comparison to say, you know, something like Deep Red, Deep Red was so much better. Inferno, Inferno was so much better. Uh, so, I don't know, I just feel like it's a very relatively weak offering. I like the idea behind the story, I like the settings, and there are a lot of other things to like about this, but there are a lot of things that aren't so great. I think the cinematography looked very different as opposed to what Argento cinematography normally looks like. Um, he didn't use colors as much as he usually does in a lot of films, and there just weren't that many interesting shots. It just seemed a little boring as far as cinematography went. Uh, yeah, and the other thing is, I, I believe he did not have Goblin uh, for the set, for the score, so a lot of the music was just not all that great or engaging, or what you kind of would expect from Argento. Um, the other thing is, there's this there was this weird dichotomy between having actual opera music, which they had a lot in the film, and then having, like, heavy metal version of opera music, which is, like, this kind of Ronnie James Dio-esque music uh, that's pumping. And at first I was just like, D -d -d it's so weird because they clash so much and they're so different. They're, like, opposite ends of the musical spectrum in a way. But then I thought about it, and I'm like, no, it's actually kind of cool in a sense because you have opera, which is very operatic obviously and it's on the classical side and it's seen as very like high class and oh it's so stylish and classy and then you have heavy metal on the other side on the other hand but the dio-esque style of heavy metal is operatic the singing is is very much the same and so it's kind of it kind of is making a point of like people think that opera is like very nice and high class and classy and people don't think that about heavy metal especially heavy metal like this but they're pretty similar in in actuality so i really liked that kind of mix uh it was annoying at first because you're just like this seems weird the score is very weird and where's goblin you know but um it kind of worked I, I i feel like it worked um do 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 yeah the ravens were just ugh, the noises were like insufferable is a good way to put it um, the, the movie, especially in the beginning, well, it's weird because in the very beginning of the film, it seems very frantic and kind of like, um, scattered how they kind of like go from like scene to scene. And I think part of that has to do with the feel they were trying to create with the behind the scenes of this opera, but also, but then, um, it's weird because then the movie like really ends up slowing down and then it starts feeling like crazy slow and they're taking way too long on scenes that really shouldn't take that long. They take a lot of the excitement and a lot of the tension out of it because of the way they draw things out. And it's just boring. The movie's like an hour and 45 minutes-ish. And I think it really should have been about an hour and a half. Maybe less than that, to be honest. You could cut a lot out and make it a lot better. The pacing was off. The pacing was very off with this film. Uh, and the dubbing, the, the dubbed voices were very wooden, not good. This is one of the instances where I wish that a lot of these Giallo films actually had the option for subtitles with Italian. It would just make things so much easier and better. Oh, I needed to go back to the eye thing. There's a very, very big focus in this film on eyes. And uh, like I was saying, like focusing on Raven's eyes, but also character's eyes and and also there's like trauma having to do with eyes as well and i think it's kind of just this this uh point of witnessing things and the other thing is you know eyes are windows to the soul type ordeal so that comes into play as well so it's just this big focus on eyes and on that note there's a lot of close-ups that happen and argento likes to do this in films but in this film in particular, I feel like he spends too much time on the close-ups and keeps cutting to close-ups kind of unnecessarily. And it, it gets annoying to a point where you're just like, whoa, dude, can we back up? 
like g give us a minute and back this up and like let's see a wider shot here i want to see more of the environment of the set of what's going on and on the, on the topic of sets, I do think the sets look really good. And this is one thing that's very consistent throughout Argento's films is he makes sets look really stylish, really cool, really interesting. Usually he's doing a lot of cool things with lighting. It wasn't as much on, at um, employed during this film. Uh, I just feel like this is a film where he kind of um, stepped away from a lot of things that he, that he usually does that I like. It wasn't nearly as aesthetically pleasing as a lot of the other films I've seen of his. So that's another reason that I was kind of like, eh, on this film. Um, uh, in the beginning, they used actually a lot of lengthy POV shots. And there was one in particular that made me think that I was able to tell something about what would come into play at the end of the film. And it actually kind of ended up being a red herring, which is good. I really like that stuff. They did have a decent amount of red herrings in this, which was very, very nice. Um, the, the, but once again, like there were gratuitous p camera POV shots going through like hallways and stuff like that. And it was just like, it, when you see it initially, when it's done a few times, it's cool. And if it's kind of just like scattered, um, a few times here or there, it's, it's fine. And it looks cool from time to time. But when you just keep coming back to it and keep doing it and doing it and doing it, it's just like, okay, can we do something different, please? This is getting annoying. And I feel like there's a lot of that with this film. It's like, can you stop repetitively doing this and repetitively doing this and repetitively doing this? Like, let's let's do something different here. Um, yeah, so overly busy. The amount of close-ups are annoying. I'm actually, like, doing some of my notes but without reading them. So uh, there's a weird focus on the topic of sex and masturbation before performances in, in plays and, and opera. And it's, like, fine. Like, I don't care that it's in there, to be honest. But the way they put it in, it feels very, like, odd and shoehorned into it. And it, it just, like, it just hit me. I was just like, wait, what? Like, why why is this a thing? It doesn't have, this seem to have anything to do with the story. It's very weird. It's very out of nowhere. It just seems like someone was like, I think this is kind of funny. Let's put this in there. I hear that people before... Uh, going on the stage, have sex or jerk off. So let's put that in there. It's just like, that's yeah, weird. Um, there's some subtle commentary in this on people who make horror films and, and really like horror films and then being equated in society to being like sick and demented, basically. So it's, it's very quick. There's not a whole lot of it. They don't like uh, make that theme very apparent, but it's, it's like a quickly referenced thing, which I think is kind of cool because... That does happen in real life. Like, people think, oh, you like horror films? You're kind of gross. You're kind of sick. So, I like that. Um, there's, okay, so there's, this is where the no spoilers part comes in, but if you've seen it, you'll know what I'm referring to. So, there's something that keeps occurring between the killer and the main character that I think is very effective and actually does a good job at building up tension. The only problem, though, is... Um, with the long drawn out stuff and how it starts feeling very, very slow, the tension that's created by that thing that keeps happening gets killed by the pacing of the actual movie. And it really sucks for that reason. You're just like, oh man, you could have been so better if you would have edited this much better. It would have kept things like moving and been really engaging. And uh, But the thing that they have that repeatedly happens, I think is actually really cool. It's a really kind of original, cool concept. And that's one of my favorite things about this film, to be honest. <clears throat> I already talked about the focus on eyes. Uh, there's a really cinematically beautiful kill scene in this film that is in slow motion. So once again, not giving anything away by saying that, but if you've seen it, you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, it looked great. I remember, like, well, I remember, I just watched it. <laughs> I remember sitting there and just being like, oh my gosh, that, that looked, looked beautiful. It was cinematically amazing. It looked so good. And you know what I'm talking about if you've seen it. Uh, the main character seems ridiculous, but then actually I kind of realized that it's also almost all characters in this film. When someone dies, they're just kind of like, meh. Like, no one legitimately cares about the fact that people are being killed. Like, no one cares, really. The only thing is they focus mainly on the main character having to do with the deaths, and it becomes very apparent that she only cares about her own safety, and she's just like, oh my god, that person died, okay, 
Like, the people move past death like it's nothing. They just breeze right like, past it, and they're just like, huh, well, that person died. Okay, you guys, uh, you want to do some practice uh, for the for the opera or what? It's ridiculous. And and those things kind of bother me because, you know, the, the film doesn't have to feel like it's 100% realistic. But at least with emotional stuff like that, you got to make it seem somewhat realistic. And in this instance, it's just not. Um, and then, yeah, it just seemed like really slow and meandering. And that was the last thing I wrote down. So overall, ugh, I don't know. I don't. I'm between two numbers on this one, so I do my five-star scale with half-stars in play. If I could do quarters, I would give it a 2.25, but I'm between two and a half and two. Um, because of the annoyingness of a lot of the stuff that's actually done in this, I'm going to go two. I really was not a big fan of this, and I don't think I'd really recommend it. But if you heard some things in this review that you really liked and you haven't seen it yet, go ahead and check it out. It's I, I think it's fine to see once. You know, I, I don't think it's the one you're going to want to go back to. I certainly don't want to, but maybe you do. I don't know. Everyone's got their own opinion, and obviously this review is my opinion. So, But, um, you know, whatever. Uh, check it out if you want to check it out, and I really appreciate people checking out this uh, review, though. Uh, go ahead and hit, hit that subscribe if you haven't already. It can really help me out a lot. Plus, it encourages me to do more of these. And I just want to keep doing them whenever, when people are like, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Ugh, say that ten times fast. Uh, put down some comments. Have you seen this movie? What are, What's your take? Do you disagree with me? Do you really like this? I know it's considered to be a pretty good Giallo film. I just, there are a lot of things that really messed it up for me. and messed up the flow and got annoying. And I was just like, yeah, this isn't. This isn't my thing. Um, and then you can give a thumbs up if you want. But the big thing is subscribe and tell other people about it. If you know some people out there who like no spoiler movie reviews for horror films, let them know. Anyway, thanks everyone for checking this out. Until next time, keep it brutal.